All right, and joining me today is Mansur Abdul Malik, who fights Wesley Schultz at Dana White's Contender Series Week One. That fight is on August 13th. So, Mansur, I wanted to start here. You know, you get the call. I love to ask this question to everybody who gets the call for Contender Series. You get the call. How's it come? What are your emotions like when you do get it? As normal as as any other day. It was it was expected. Matter of fact, I probably just went on a run right after that. It was just a normal <laughs> day. Probably got a little sub or something. I love it. I love it. So I have to imagine that the win on LFA, the absolute brutality of all of it, you know, the fact that you're 5-0 and and it happened in a relatively short amount of time, is that sort of where the, the confidence came from, the fact that you knew it was coming? Man, the confidence comes from me doing it every single day. Like, I've been doing this since I was a little kid. I've been involved in it for a very, very, very long time. So it's not like um, the confidence has just sprouted from, like, a certain event. It's come from my relevant experience from being on the mat for many, many years. So that's where it comes from. And now I wanted to talk to you too about how you sort of got into it, but you, you led me right into it there. So tell me a little bit about your background and how you decided to start doing MMA. Because I know wrestling was a big part of your life as well, but how, how did MMA become the, the central focus? Wrestling is a big part, but wrestling is also just one part. So I started when I was around six years old, started doing jujitsu, judo, and a lot of um, really older martial arts more traditional martial arts, one called even uh, Tang Soo Do. Many people aren't familiar with that one. But I've been in this for a very, very, very long time. And it's just I'm in love with the art of it. It's not a it's not like a like a sport or like a or like a fight. Even this doesn't even seem like a career. It's just my life. And I just love what I do. Um I started off doing that and then it got a little bit more serious with wrestling because school was involved with that too. So throughout high school and college, it was uh, a little bit heavier. And then I just returned back to martial arts and MMA when I was finished up in college. And here I am now living the dream. And, and was the thought always, even when you're, you know, obviously you wrestled at a very high level in college as well. Was the thought always, we're going to go back there. We're going to go back to MMA. Man, the, the thought was in my mind, 24, 7, 365. <laughs> I could not, I could not pay attention in math because it was <laughs> on my mind so much. But uh, yeah, it was, it was always there and never left. I never let it leave my mind. So I just went right back to it. And, and so I, I want to talk to you about when you got into AMI MMA too, because I know the debut was in 2019. I mean, I remember watching it. You fought on Cowboy Fight Series. <laughs> it was a really pop, you know, I was working for Flow Combat at the time. It was a really popular new amateur MMA, you know, obviously with the Cowboy Cerrone thing and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You absolutely pieced that guy up on the feet. You know, you tore him apart. It was on highlight shows, all that kind of stuff. But then MMA for a while pretty much closed down, right? Like six months later, yeah, the man. entire MMA scenes, uh, specifically AMI MMA and, and Cowboy Fight Series disappeared altogether. Where did that sort of leave you? How did you feel through, you know, sort of having that kind of disappear in the blink of an eye? I didn't even think about it. As long as I could train the next day, I was fine. I was fine with it. Like with COVID and everything, everything, you know, did kind of shut down a little bit. But if you want it bad enough, and if it's ingrained within your mind and it's there within your heart, potent enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. You'll find a way to get back to that addiction that is MMA. And so then you spend the next couple of years, you know, obviously not able to compete because it's harder to find Emmy fights and stuff like that. But you spend the next couple of years in the lab, you know, making sure everything is tight, you know, all that kind of stuff. Was the thought then I've spent enough time on this. It's time to go pro. Like I, I need that pro debut now. I was thinking that before my first amateur <laughs> fight. I mean, uh, with, but but in all seriousness, yes, yes, there was a certain point where I felt, you know, it's time, it's time to to go after it in a very very serious way. The thoughts always in my mind. You, you should always be ready to fight the highest competition and compete against the highest level guys, even if you may not be there technically on that on that level, which I am now. <laughs> but it's uh it's a, it's a it's a good idea and a good thought to have that you're already ready and already prepared to get at these guys even if you may not technically be there early on but um yeah man i'm 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 very grateful to be able to do this and and I was ready to go pro before I even found my first amateur fight. <laughs> well, well, tell me about how that it wound up on the amateur scene. Because we've seen people go pro without an AMB fight before. Mm -hmm. Did you have a coach, a mentor, a parent, somebody telling you, hey, we gotta we gotta test the waters before we get too deep? <laughs> I think it was a smart decision. That was more, <laughs> more definitely definitely coaches, but it was also like an executive decision. Get in there, test the waters. Don't be arrogant, be confident, of course, but just you know, go out there and 
treat things in a professional way. And that's what I did. Got one out of the way, one right to professional. And and now I know you've said that you've trained in a lot of martial arts, right? Like obviously, you know, the wrestling, very high level. You talked about judo and jujitsu at age six. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like a lot of what we've seen is your hands just exploding, right? Like, you know, those, <laughs> those three things we just mentioned are not throwing hands. Those are all throwing, you know, people to the ground and, and beating yep, them out yep, there. Yep. But, you know, the first Amy fight, the hands were electric. We've seen it since then. Is that just an art, you know, the boxing and all of that kind of stuff? Is that just an art that you've taken to easily compared to the other things? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been doing I've been doing this for a very, very long time as well. Muay Thai and, and got a little, a little bit into uh, in, in boxing as well. But um, it's just all fights start on the feet, too. I'm prepared for all of it, man. I swear to God, I'm prepared for all of it. It's just that those fights got finished. <laughs> at that time on the feet. So I'm grateful for whatever comes though. Absolutely. And and I've had, and I have a feeling I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you the question anyway. I've had a lot of fighters say when they're five and oh, and they've only had first round fights, you know, that they kind of wish a fight would go a little deeper, that they wish somebody could, you know, give them a test that'll make them see what they're made of. Are you kind of at that level now where you like almost wish that like, you know, somebody test me here because I haven't been tested yet. Man. To be honest, all that stuff is, all that stuff is like heavy. All that's kind of weird. Like wishing for a harder fight or wishing for an easier fight. I just take it as it comes. I'm just expressing myself in there. I'm not even thinking about the other guy. To be honest, I study. I take them seriously. I take my training seriously. But all of those extra questions and and extra ideas and extra feelings of, of you know, I want this test. I want this to be a little bit grittier or I want this to be easier. That's too much for me. I like to eat. I like to go train. <laughs> lose a little bit of weight, go fight, and just keep on going like that. All right. Well, you know, I'm going to ask you about the fight. I'm going to ask you about that opponent in a second. I see you drinking water, so maybe this is a cool <laughs> question. You're definitely getting ready for that weight cut, right? You know, we're, we're a month and a half away at this point. What mm-hmm. What's the first thing you're eating when you get done? What's the You said you like to eat. What What's the first thing we're indulging on when this weight cut's all done with? <laughs> the first thing? Honestly? <laughs> I want some steak, eggs, and avocado. That's a ah. that's a plan right there. That's, that's respectful. That's respectful. Now let's get into talking about the fight because obviously, you know, like you said, you're a student of the game. You like to do what you do, but also, you know, this is a business. We got to know what our opponent looks like here. Wes Schultz, you know, kind of like you, has risen up the rankings pretty quickly. Looked really good in LFA. Has a little bit of a wrestling background, but also likes to get silly on the feet too, right? Like mm-hmm. he's a guy who likes to get a little wild. What were sort of your thoughts when you did first start to watch him as, as your opponent? Zero thoughts. Zero thoughts. All I did was take it in a cerebral kind of way. I knew his name. I did what I did to study, as I'm still doing. And that's as far as it goes, really. I understand his frame. I understand his height, his reach, everything that he poses, his skill set. And that's it. That And that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it needs to go. Take it seriously. Take him seriously. But also, focus on myself. Because the opponent can change. The guy can change. He can come in with different motives and different objectives. So I just look at things from a broader perspective. Zero in on the things that I need to focus on. And just keep moving. I like that. Now, I got to ask, too. You know, obviously... You, you come at this from a, a long time in martial arts, you know, lots of different coaches, lots of different, you know, different arts and things like that. Is there a coach that helped you with this mindset the most, or is it just sort of being immersed in this at such a young age that you have this approach to martial arts that not many people do? W- was there one person or is it sort of a conglomeration? Man, it's a, it's a major, major conglomeration. And I honestly, I wouldn't even feel comfortable like saying one specific name because each individual person as I've gotten older as a young man has helped me in different parts of my life and has given me different perspectives and different ideas. And, and, and they've allowed me to almost see myself in a different way. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. And I'm grateful for everyone, but there is, there's one person that has really, really, really ingrained that within me and just helped me mold myself into the person I am today. And that's my father. And I love him so much, but even more so than him, it's God. It's God. And I'm grateful for all of these people because it's, it's honestly, it's really them. It's really them. I'm almost like the vehicle just on the road and I'm just driving. But these guys are the drivers. These guys are the fuel. These guys are the things and the people 
that have helped me and cultivated me into the person I am today. And I'm so grateful for them. I swear to God. Well, and obviously the next stop for that car is at Dana White's Contender Series, August 13th. So I always like to end these things with a prediction. Tell me how you see this one ending at Dana White's Contender Series 1. I see it ending in my favor. I see it ending in a beautiful way, too. I swear to God, man, I see it ending in a beautiful way. I'm just going to see things as they are. I'm going to maximize the opportunities that I have to capitalize on the things that he exposes. And I'm going to minimize the things that I expose. And that's it, man. I'm just going to take things as they are, keep my eyes open, stay alert, stay calm. And it's going to be beautiful. Well, you already here. First, folks, this is Ben Mansoura of Double League, who fights West Schultz, Dana White's Contender Series Week 1. Once again, that fight, August 13th. Mansoura, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother, so much.